the use of dispersants in the Gulf oil spill, a biological perspective. By Christina Dudley. The April 20, 2010 oil spill is the largest marine oil spill in the history of the petroleum industry. Flowing uncontrollably for three months, it spilled an estimated 4.9 million barrels of crude oil into the Gulf region. A dead zone appeared just off the Louisiana coast from the oil. On September 19, 2010, after months of trying to seal the well, the well was declared effectively dead. These are satellite photos showing the oil spilling into the Gulf region right outside of Louisiana. Miles of ocean fronts covered in oil. They burn crude oil, adding to the depletion of the ozone layer. They retrieved oil. They send people out to clean the beaches. To combat the large oil spill, BP and the EPA decided to use the dispersant Corex at 9500. Scientists had been concerned that oil and dispersant eating activity by microbes would consume large amounts of oxygen in the water and create a dead zone dangerous to other life. The study, June 2010, found that oxygen saturation outside the oil plume was 67%, while within the plume it was 59%. May 25th and June 2nd, 2010, scientists found that the dominant microbe in the oil plume is a new species. The oxygen levels were a far cry from the microbial feast predicted by British Petroleum. However, both methane and propane metabolism were noted by Valentine et al. 2010. Total petroleum hydrocarbons is a term used to describe a broad family of several hundred chemical compounds that originally come from crude oil. Methane and propane are just two of them. The manufacturer of Corexit 9500 has stated that the potential human hazard is low. Over 2 million gallons of the neurotoxin Corexit were used in the Gulf region. Corexit 9500 oil mixture is capable of rendering the water toxic to the point of being lethal to 50% of Menindah fish within 96 hours of exposure. Risks to humans. Warnings were posted on beaches for five states in the Gulf region. Because I got to visit a Pardue uh, before he was sent to the hospital last week. But uh, Sunday night, I sat for three hours while he uh, uh, went through constant seizures. No one's mother cried. I held his head in my lap. I kissed his forehead. I told him everything was going to be okay and I was at least lucky that he was able to be some help he needed. I am uh, now losing feeling in my right arm and this twitch that you guys see in my face constantly. My face has just been moving on its own. By the end of the day, I can't control my lips and uh, I can barely hold fluid into my mouth. My left pupil is always dilated, and they're saying that I'm having neurological damage. 
I have critically high levels of chemicals in my body, 33-year-old Stephen Oguana of Hazelhurst, Mississippi told Al Jerez. I swam underwater and then I found I had worn slick stuff all over me, Aguana said. At that time I had no knowledge of what dispersants were, but within a few hours we were drained of energy and not feeling good. I've been extremely sick ever since. Animal rescue workers worked endlessly during the spill. At risk were sea turtles and other marine mammals, as well as a multitude of birds that pass through this area every year during migration. Louisiana's state bird is among the many sea creatures affected by the BP oil spill. Many birds were found covered in oil. The Kemp's Ridley is the most seriously endangered of all sea turtles due to lingering impacts of the deep water oil disaster on Gulf waters. Over 14,000 sea turtle hatchlings were saved and safely released into the Atlantic. The crude oil and the dispersant used is toxic to zooplankton. Plankton, algae, and seaweed form the base of our global marine food chain. Humans, land mammals, and birds are on the upper end of the marine food chain or consumers of marine life. This is a plankton bloom off the Gulf of Mexico before the oil spill. No recent photos are available of the plankton bloom since the catastrophe. As you can see from the satellite photo, the blooms of plankton occur close to the shoreline as do some of the damages from the spill. Also occurring close to the shoreline and around the Chandler Islands, seagrass, a keystone species that may have been affected by the oil spill and the dispersant. Seagrasses provide food, shelter, and essential nursery areas. Through photosynthesis, these plants add to the amount of oxygen saturation in the water and they also protect against coastal erosion. The seagrasses are very efficient in carbon absorption and binding. It is estimated that seagrasses per square meter are capable of binding about 1,000 grams of carbon every year. The ocean absorbs between 20 to 25 percent of global carbon emissions. Seagrasses may be a global keystone species because of its ability to bind carbon. Many simple life forms could be destroyed or mutated by the oil and the chemical dispersants used in the Gulf of Mexico. Other food chains or ecological communities may also be affected by the spill. An average bird's niche is to spread around seeds of fruits and other plants in its droppings and to control insect pest populations. This mutant one-legged bird was sighted off the Pensacola, Florida coast in 2012. Migrating birds and insects 
could bring oil and chemicals from the dispersant back to their nesting areas, creating other mutations. These silicone brown patches and foam waters were also sighted in Pensacola, Florida in early 2012. The season closed early for oysters and shrimp in 2012 because of low weight. 2010-2012 Dolphin Unusual Mortality Event Dolphins have stranded nine times higher than normal. The scientists' preliminary results show that many of the dolphins in the study are underweight, anemic, have low blood sugar, and or some symptoms of liver and lung disease. There has been talk of having BP restock the Gulf region as part of a settlement. So far, nothing definite has been agreed to. Wildlife and Fisheries Secretary told the Daily Comet back in 2010. Their website still mentions Jindal wanting the settlement. The ocean's biodiversity is threatened by increased human use climate change, environmental pollution, and over-harvesting. The Gulf oil spill polluted the air, the Gulf waters, the shoreline, and added to the destruction of the ozone layer. Despite the known casualties of the oil spill, the thousands of dead creatures, and the 11 men killed the total effect of the spill remains unknown. Since 1907, over 46 million barrels of oil have spilled globally. A tone is equal to 7.33 barrels.
Thank you.